Tanya and the Chamber for inviting me to do this presentation. Um, I hope that it's going to be, you know, informative, um, it can be interactive, um, hopefully there'll be some humor. I like to keep things light and funny, um, you know, we need it in this um, interesting time right now. So um, it's 30 minutes, I'm going to try and get through everything quickly because I do want to take any questions of which um, you can send them in chat if you like, or you can hold them um, to the end and I can, you know, pop back in and, and chat with you. Or um, I also would like to talk about spring, you know, hopeful spring 2020 fashion tips for women and men. Um, I don't see any gentlemen on the um, call right now, but I hopefully will get a few. I do have um, some fashion tips for you. So the first, and I just want to disclaim right now, please, if I experience technical challenges um, jumping between myself and uh, the PowerPoint. I apologize, but I don't want to just sit here and have you staring at me and this lovely uh, wall painting behind me. So I'm going to try to make this a little interactive for us all. So first is, um, who am I and why did the chamber ask me to speak with you? So I'm going to jump right in um, to the video portion here and let's see, hopefully you can all uh, see this on your screen. And um, obviously the session here we are for is doing a virtual closet detox. Virtual because I am not there um, to do it in your home right now. Normally I would go into a client's home and we would do this um, uh, process together. So this is to teach you how to do it on your own while you're social distancing. So, as I said, who am I and why did the chamber ask me to speak to you? Um, so, I spent the, my, actually my whole career in the fashion industry. Um, I started in um, New York and then San Francisco working for the Gap and Banana Republic in um, merchandising and production roles. I was with them for 11 years. I have also worked for uh, major companies in um, senior leadership roles such as Perry Ellis and um, I was a VIP customer care representative with Chanel and most recently I was the personal shopper at Bloomingdale's in Aventura. Um, in 2019 I decided to leave Bloomingdale's and I went out on my own and formed uh, Miami Personal and Corporate Styling. And you know, it was my goal to really work one-on-one -on -one with um, men and women and helping them to look and feel their best. Um, you know, I feel that you know, confidence, as I say here, is smart, it's sexy, and it's successful. We all want to look and feel our best. So um, that's me and a nutshell. The next is what is a closet detox? So a closet detox, I like to think is a, it's a literal experience. We will be purging and getting rid of things in your closet. It's also a um, mental um, experience. It's, I like to think cathartic. Um, it's a cleansing of your mind and getting rid of those clothes that you no longer need and that are um, holding you down emotionally. And what I mean by that is that we all have those clothes and items in our closet that have a, a meaning to us, whether it's a positive or a negative experience. For example, um, if you have um, had your weight, a lot of people, their weight fluctuates and they hold on to what they call their fat clothes. Well, is that you know the best thing to hold on to these clothes that don't have a positive um, you know, connotation or feeling in your life, or if you went through a major life change, such as a divorce, um, you know, I've had people, oh, I'm holding on to this um, outfit, you know, it's from, you know, when I was going through my divorce. Well, is that something that you want to keep in your mental closet? Um, you know, it's time to move on and cleanse the closet literally and figuratively. So that's what today is about and what a closet detox is. So just want to take you through, um, hopefully you find this a little funny, but this is actually very true. When I go into a client's home and I do a closet detox, there are 
what I call, um, a, in, if you took psychology in um, college, you know that there is the hierarchy of what they call depth and the different um, you know, emotions of it. So I call this the emotions or hierarchy of a closet detox. So the first is excitement. You are excited to start this process. You're like, yes, I am going to clean my closet. I am going to have a whole new wardrobe afterwards of things that I can mix and match. Okay, about 30 minutes into the process, we start getting into the nitty gritty and the real dirt. Denial is phase number two. I've seen this, it's ugly. You start getting mad at me. I hear a lot of, I hate you, Diane. I don't want to get rid of this. Please don't make me. Um, oftentimes when I'm in clients' home, wine bottles start to open. Uh, it's all good though, I promise you. Number three, bargaining. This is the most uh, fascinating. Please, if you let me wear it, I promise I um, will wear this with you know, this outfit, or um, I was planning to wear this to an event, but now that it's canceled, I can't wear it. So very interesting um, and humorous um, is number three, the bargaining to keep. And then the last emotion in a closet detox is acceptance. You finally just, a lot of times I step back away from the, cl the client and I let them continue to go through the closet and they just start taking things off the hanger and throwing them on the ground. I don't need that, I'm not gonna wear that. Why was I thinking when I bought that? So that's probably my most favorite part is when you start to um, go through and editing it yourself. So um, that was just kind of my little humorous but true take on the emotions and the hierarchy of doing a closet deep. So let's begin. The first step, and you probably aren't doing this literally, is um, you're going to get inside your closet. And, um, you know, I suggest if you have a partner or spouse, roommate, um, children, this is a great activity to do with the children right now. Um, you know, as, as I like to say, get your smallest and fastest child so that when you hand them that one outfit that you're um, bargaining and begging to keep, they can run and hide with it and keep it from you. Uh, so get into the closet and we're going to go through. And what I do is there's a series of questions. If I were there, I would be asking you. So again, if you're a spouse partner um, or you can ask yourself these questions, when did I last wear this item? I normally like to suggest if you've not worn it in the last six to eight months, you need to reevaluate why it's there. But I've gotten a lot of pushback from people um, saying that because they live in certain clients, such as a client I um, did a virtual closet detox in Canada, that she really only has two seasons, winter and winter, or uh, winter and spring, which lasts about two months. So she can't throw something out because it was only worn six to eight months ago. So I will give you a year's reprieve on this. Um, so after you've asked yourself, when was the last time I wear it? Why didn't you wear it in over a year? What was the reason? Does it not fit? Is the quality not good anymore? Um, is it no longer in style? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. And if you have answered that, you know, basically, no, this item does not pass the criteria. You need to put it in the purge pile. Please, that pile is going to grow very rapidly. And I know you're going to shed a few tears, but I promise you, you're going to feel great at the end of this. Um, if the item meets the criteria or you did such a good job of begging and pleading that, you know, you, you kept the item, then let's put it back in the closet. We're going to organize the closet still. This is not just throwing things on the floor to purge. You have to clean, you have to organize the closet at the end of this. So these are actual examples of me when I was at a client's house on the left. She had a, um, a beautiful dress that we pulled out and um, she's going to you know, be wearing that in Miami, obviously you can wear maxi dresses year round. 
And then on the right, I found this Christmas light turtleneck, a fleece turtleneck, um, crumpled up and hid at the top of her client. And this person is on the um, webinar right now, so she knows very well who she is. Um, we got rid of this. I don't, I don't care what excuse you make up to me. It's the family Christmas card. You like to wear it when it's cold. It has to go. So that is um, basically the process you're going to go through. Um, I would say generally it will take, depending on how many closets you have, two to three hours. Um, I recently went to a client's house uh, in Aventura. We spent four and a half hours because we did stop for wine breaks. <laughs> so it's all up to you how you pace yourself. There really is no um, time frame that this would take, but estimate two to three hours to be safe. So after you go through this process and hopefully your pile has um, grown, we need to organize the closet. So um, I'm giving you an example. There's two ways you can do this. Let me just back up. Um, you can do it while you're purging the closet, um, depending on the size of your closet, and you can start moving all of the same items over to um, different areas. For example, all dresses together, all jackets together, all of your tops, um, your bottoms together, or you can wait till the end. There really is no right or wrong answer um, of doing it. So on the left is um, not ideal. That still is disorganized. You know, you went through, you purged the closet, but I can't make heads or tails out of what is in your wardrobe on the left. So the ideal situation would be here on the right uh, by doing it by silhouette. So by silhouette, I mean, um, if we have all of our tops together, um, do it starting with sleeveless to cap sleeve to short sleeve to long sleeve, and then by color from white um, to darks with you know patterns either um, at the end or in between. Um, but really this is to help so that, for example, if somebody were to um, send you an invite and they say, hey, it's a white party, you can immediately go to your closet and find what you have in um, the white color, color scheme for this event. Also, I do not recommend hanging t-shirts or sweaters and also denim. I would fold down all of your jeans on shelves. Um, you know, it's really going to leave a lot more room because denim is very bulky and can take up a lot of space. So that is really how a closet detox goes. It's not a difficult process. Um, you know, and at the end, it's very important that you do organize your closet or I feel that it somewhat, um, you know, kind of uh, doesn't help the, um, it discredits is the word I'm looking for, the whole process of being organized so that when you walk in, you feel good. You don't feel like you're going into your closet and you just want to have a breakdown. So um, I'm seeing some chats coming through. Um, I'm trying to to see if there's any, if you have any questions. Um, I'm gonna pop back on the screen for a moment. Um, here is my contact information. If, you know, if you're not comfortable asking a question on the screen, you can email me directly at dianeatmiamistyling.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. So let me pause the sharing and I'm gonna try to get back onto the screen, okay. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you can see me. Um, and we have 10 people. Thank you uh, for joining. Uh, are there any questions right now before I jump into the spring 2020 uh, fashion tips? So I see everyone's muted. Uh, feel free. You can um, ask me the question. A couple of you are unmuting. Uh, scroll up to see questions. Uh, let's see. See, Alicia, she has things six to eight months. Okay. Um, Shari said she has things from decades. Okay. Well, you know what? There, I'm not going to, I'm not here to argue and, you know, force people to throw things out, but there are some things, and I will get into that during my spring 2020, uh, use my glasses, my spring 2020 fashion tips. There are some things 
that you can and should keep so long as they still are in good condition and fit. One of those is leopard print or animal prints. Never get rid of animal prints. They never go out of style. They go in waves in terms of whether we are wearing them full blown or we're just wearing them as accents. But um, there's certain things like that that I suggest. Also, um, you know, designer handbags, don't get rid of those. Um, I made the mistake years ago of getting rid of um, some Fendi and Gucci bags and, you know, they all come back around and now I'm, I'm very upset that I, I got rid of them. So there are some things that you can hold on to. But most of it, I'm going to say, has to go. Um, you know, I have an example from a client that I went to her house a few weeks ago, and she pulled out a bunch of items in her closet, and she said she had these before she was married. And I said, how long have you been married? She said, 20 years. I, was, I just shook my head. I was like, why are we holding on to things from 20 years ago that you haven't worn since you were in college before you got married? So have these honest conversations with yourself. All right, so I'm going to now go back to um, sharing my screen and go through 2020 spring fashion trends. I'm going to try and do this right now. Hopefully you can see my screen. All right. Please message me if you are not seeing spring 2020 fashion tips on your screen. So the first is florals. And I like to bring up this slide from one of my favorite movies, The Devil Wears Prada, where uh, Miranda Priestly says, florals for spring, ground breaking. So it always makes me laugh. And it's true though, what is groundbreaking about florals? Um, you know, every year they come in, in different shapes, sizes, and colors. So for spring 2020, it's about larger scale florals in shades of blues and greens and pinks. I'm going to get into color a little bit more and why these shades are important. Um, I really am into green for spring. Um, I think especially right now, it's important as it signifies growth. Diane, and yeah, uh, I, we're not. I don't. I'm not seeing your screen. I don't okay. know if anybody okay. else is um, okay. seeing. I don't think we're seeing your screen. Okay, I apologize. Thank you so much. That's why I need help. Okay. There uh, you go. Yay! Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna keep talk, talk, talking to myself over here. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, so as I said, spring 2020, I'm just going to flip through uh, florals. As I said, there's my Miranda Priestley screen. So uh, florals, as I said, large scale florals. Um, you know, here you can see blues and greens. Um, here, pinks paired back to white. Um, here in Miami is great. Um, an all over floral dress. This is from local Miami boutique, Julian Chang. And um, also, I love, it's a little hard to see um, here, this is an abstract floral. Uh, this is a Pucci print, and it's, you know, great as a statement pant or top paired back to white bottoms or a solid top. Um, and trying to see if there's anything else to call back here. They said I'm really into green. Um, animal and snake prints, as I mentioned earlier, never get rid of animal prints. Uh, snake prints come in and out of fashion. If you have some, I wouldn't get rid of them, but um, they are a little more cyclical versus animal, which always uh, stays stays around in some way, shape, or form. So how to wear animal prints. There's um, three different looks here. If this is, um, you know, on the, I'm going to start with on the right side of the screen. If you just want an accent piece, a great top, Paired back to a solid bottom is a fun way to do an animal print. Or here in the middle, um, a leopard uh, palazzo pant paired back to a solid top is fun for evening, um, going out for, at some point in our life, going back out for drinks and cocktails and dinner. Or um, you know, a little more bold, I actually um, have this. It's, again, from uh, Julian Chang, as I mentioned, here in Miami. It's a leopard print kimono. 
Um, it's a great way. I love kimonos. Um, I, when I was the personal shopper at Bloomingdale's, I love to put my clients in kimonos because it's so flattering on every shape and um, person. Um, you can do a kimono tie, you can do it open like this, worn over um, solid um, black or white. Uh, jeans, leggings, you can wear flats, tennis shoes. It's just a great piece. So don't us underestimate the kimonos. Um, then if you're not feeling that that's for you, I would use them as accent pieces. Um, so for example, a handbag, a shoe in an animal print, um, a snake or reptile print belt, a scarf, um, sneakers, tennis shoes. That's a, a great fun way. Or um, a clutch is another evening option. So try to integrate some sort of animal or reptile print into your wardrobe this spring. Then shades of sorbet and tie-dye. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, I've been talking a lot about tie-dye. And you know, some I know some of us are a little um, on the mature side and you know when I say tie dye you start thinking about you know Jerry Garcia and I lived in San Francisco for nine years on the Haight Ashbury so I get a few flashbacks to um, Haight Ashbury and, and tie dye but tie dye is fun it's refreshing and it's uh, very hot for spring 2020 especially in shades of sorbet so thank you Alicia said she's seen tie dye everywhere so how you integrate the two of them. Sorbets, um, you know, again, as an accessory. Um, here's a great purse from Michael Kors in a periwinkle. Uh, we have this pink resin um, chunky heel. Chunky heels are still important uh, for spring. Or a necklace. Um, this is a great statement necklace in shades of um, pale blue, green, and uh, pink quartz. I love that necklace. Take those colors and put it back into tie-dye pieces. The piece I would recommend for everyone, and even men can do a modified version of tie-dye. Um, there are sweatshirts out there. Um, I love it here in a hoodie or pullover. Um, if you're feeling a little more adventurous uh, in a legging or jogger, and here we have it in all those beautiful sherbet and sorbet colors, or uh, in Miami, a maxi or sundress look in tie-dye. I think that is just so fresh and um, you know, just, just an exciting look. And I, I love this dress here. That's from Revolve. So if there's any questions afterwards of um, who these items are from, I'm glad to uh, follow up with you. So we go from that into men's trends. Now, of course, there are a few more trends going on for spring, but I really want to save some of it for um, my webinar next Tuesday, the 31st, same time and place, where I will be going a little bit more into um, clothing trends. Today was really about the, the closet detox. So for any gentlemen on the call, um, you know, your trends aren't as obvious as animal print or tie-dye. It's really about what I like to call blue jean baby. Blue, my favorite color on everyone. Um, it, looks great on every complexion, every size, every shape. Um, if you have blue or green eyes, it is the perfect accent um, color for you. So ways that you can do blue. Blue suits. Um, I work with a custom men's tailoring um, company in Brickell called Jackson Maximus. Check them out. Um, and I brought many clients in for custom suits. And I always tell them, get a basic suit if you would like a black a gray uh, a charcoal but also get a blue suit you know a brighter shade of blue such as this one here or if you're not as i'm um, feeling as bold as this color you know a um a navy blue that's just a smidgen lighter and brighter uh, also um blue shirts uh stripes solid I love this gingham check here, very fresh and um, great for spring. Um, stripes, as you can see here, denim shirts, 
Denim shirts are always great. Um, you know, paired back to dark denim, as they as they jokingly call it, the um, Canadian tuxedo. You know, denim on denim. If you do it right, it's a great look. So um, all shades of blue shown here, from a light to a darker and a mid tone. Uh, also, jeans. Jeans never go out of style, but the trend for 2020 is not distressed, ripped, or torn. No more of the ragged look, and this applies for women also. It's not about torn and distressed denim with so many holes that your legs are showing through. It's about clean. It's about slim fit, not skinny. Um, slim fit looks great on men. Don't be fooled. If you find the right fit, some of my favorite brands are J Brand, um, uh, Seven for All Mankind, uh, et cetera. So those are just some great brands that offer um, some slim fits that are not going to hug you and stretch. Stretch is very important combined with slim fit. So um, the darker denim, I would say medium to darker tones. They also, um, uh, make a provide a slimmer silhouette and look versus the lighter denim. So for men, it's all about the blue jean vibes. Um, also, men can do sorbet and pastels. Um, not everyone's going to be as um, daring as the two gentlemen here in Italy on um, the left of my screen who are in head to toe pastels. So I've offered up other options. I love a simple pocket square. As you can see here, um, the gentleman's wearing, it looks like a navy or charcoal gray suit. And he just added in a pop of a um, pink sorbet pocket square. Um, also, you could do that with a tie. Pocket squares and ties are the best accessory that a gentleman has next to um, shoes. Also, here's some great options of some button down shirts. And then last but not least, a polo. Um, this is from one of my favorite brands, Psycho Bunny. They make great, um, they go up to size uh, 3X, I believe. So they are um, democratic and fit for everybody. And they offer some of the freshest, um, nicest colors in their polos and um, and uh, other, uh, they have bathing suit trunks, etc. So check out Psycho Bunny. You can find them at Bloomingdale's. Um, they have a store, I believe, in Aventura Mall. So that is, I'm going to try and get back onto um, the screen here. Stop sharing. I apologize. Uh, let's see. Hopefully you can see me again. Please let me know if you're not seeing me. I see myself back on the screen. We're um, seeing you. Okay, yay. All right, yeah. so um, I got through that in, I think in proper timing. Yep, we're almost at 11. So are there any questions from anyone? I have a question, Diane. When you, um, this is Alicia. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to like kind of help once you do the detox and you get rid of a bunch of clothes, I imagine now it's time to fill it <laughs> with like the newer yeah. trends. Yeah. So would you like shop with the person or do, or like, how do you recommend that next step would it be? Uh, does yes. the person, do you go with them to the mall? Yes, no, thank you for that. That is um, perfect transition. So again, we're doing this virtually right now, so I didn't get into it, but normally what the process would be is afterwards, um, you know, we would have all of the clothes in the um, purge pile, and I um, facilitate working with the client in um, either donating or I help to resell the items for them. Um, you know, so I will take items and I will list them on sites such as Poshmark, Real Real, etc., and um, try to, um, you know, sell the clothes. Anything that is not really uh, good for resale, we will donate, um, you know, and we can give the funds to charities, et cetera. So after that though, I would go in with the client and we would make a list of um, what is needs to be filled in to your point. So the first part would be, I would do a lookbook and we would take the items that are left in the closet and I would put together recommended looks 
so that you can easily, I would send it to you um, via text or email, and you can have it as an easy reference, you know, on your phone so that you can go in and look at what I put together from what we kept in your closet. And you can say, okay, great. I'm going to take this top and pair it back to these pants or skirt with this pair of shoes and handbags. So you're gonna have, you know, a quick reference, as I said, on your phone or your iPad. Um, I would then also go in and we would make a checklist of things that you need to fill back in. And I would work with you, either we would go shopping together or I can do the shopping for you and um, we can either meet in store or I would come to you with the items and you would um, try them on together. So, you know, it's really about what's comfortable. Some people don't want to go into the store. They really don't like shopping and that's what I'm here to help for because I love shopping or I wouldn't be doing this. So I can go, I can bring it to you. We can try it on in the comfort of your home or we can meet at you know the mall and I can have everything ready for you and we can try it on together and I can go back out and grab you know sizes um, as we need to change out. So thank you, Alicia. That's uh, an excellent point um, in terms of what would be the natural progression in this process um, once we get back to a point where we can you know get back out to the stores and meet in person. But I can also do lookbooks uh, virtually for you right now. Uh, really, I did one recently for a client in Canada. It's um, really just a matter of learning what are the retailers um, in Canada and who they can order from internationally. So um, they don't have, for example, Bloomingdale's, Macy's, et cetera in Canada, but they do have um, Nordstrom and they can order internationally through Zara. So I put together recommendations uh, from my client after we did a virtual closet detox and said, okay, these are the bottoms. These are the pants, these are the jeans, these are the shirts, et cetera, that I would recommend that you order from Nordstrom or Zara or H&M, et cetera. So um, that's, that's how we would handle it right now virtually. So great question. Does anyone else have any questions before we wrap this up? You're all still muted, kind of quiet there. Hopefully I uh, kept you entertained and informed. Um, okay, if I, I don't see any more questions. So again, you can email me directly at Diane at MiamiStyling.com, or you can follow me on Instagram and um, ask me any questions there. So thank you, and I will be back again next Tuesday, unless the chamber tells me differently, to talk mm. about how to dress working from home. Yes, and next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, same time Same place. time. Okay, look forward to it. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay inside, and we'll get through this. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.